Bollywood movies, it's not uncommon where a long lost family reunites with the help of a family song or that someone finds a brother whom he has never seen from childhood by identifying the fact that they have the same mannerisms. Even a case where uh, someone will remember something randomly but so vividly only to be explained that it is from his or her former birth. In short, these are some very interesting connections. In today's Masala History by Siva, I will try to explain to you some interesting connection between two faraway countries and communities and trace back to the event that could have sparked this in the first place. I will admit that some of these are educated guesses and conjectures with lighter evidence, nevertheless something definitely to consider. Perhaps you may even have a wow moment. So buckle your seat belts and set the time dial to 45 CE as we travel to the kingdom of Bhimgam Gaya which is on the southeast part of modern day South Korea. In the year 43 CE, King Suro founded the kingdom of Gwim Guan Gaya. Legend states that King Suro descended from heaven concealed in an egg along with others to establish the Gaya confederacy. When the time was right for his marriage, he refused to marry any of the locals. He is supposed to have had a dream that his bride would come from a very far off unknown land. Accordingly, there descends on their coastal city the future queen, a 16-year-old princess named Suri Ratna. The princess comes with a large convoy of ships with courtiers, cooks, dwellers, a small army, etc. She has travelled for over 200 days from a faraway land called Ayuta. Assuming this as a signal for his wedding, the king comes down to the coastal city to marry her. She is titled Queen Hyo Huang Ok. She would bear 10 children with him and in the 21st century, over 6 million Koreans would be considered as proud direct descendants of this royal couple. Queen Hyo Huang Ok continued to rule after King Suro's death and she is supposed to have lived for 152 years. She continues to be revered as a sea goddess queen to the day. There is a gigantic memorial of the queen in Gimhya in South Korea. Its gateway displays a twin fish symbol that was supposedly on the ships and the flags of Princess Suri Ratna when she arrived. So where did Queen Hyo Huang Ok or the Princess Suri Ratna originate from? Scripts refer to the land of Ayuta from far away and the land symbol was the twin fish. Let's explore three possibilities to explain her origin. Option 1 is that of the kingdom of Ayudhya of Thailand. The kingdom of Ayudhya did have multiple port cities and is of course a ship journey of 200 days away from Korea. However, the kingdom of Ayudhya was established only in the mid 14th century. So we can safely rule that option out. Option 2 is Ayodhya, the famous land where Lord Ram is supposed to have born and ruled. Ayodhya was an ancient city and is a good possibility. But it is to be noted that Ayodhya was a landlocked kingdom with no easy access to seaports that provided a direct route to Korea. Also more importantly, Ayodhya was actually known as Saketa in the first century and for several hundred years later, which makes this entire theory questionable. However, it's also to be remembered that when some of the chronicles of Queen Hyo Huang Ok was being penned down, the name Ayodhya did exist. The twin fish symbol, which was on the princess ship and flag, can incidentally be found on the symbol of the government of Uttar Pradesh, where Ayodhya is located. But again, this symbol was designed only in 1916 when India was British India and Uttar Pradesh was United Provinces and has no real historical connection whatsoever with our Korean story. Funnily, without any consideration to historical proofs, the modern day powers of the government of Uttar Pradesh in India worked with the South Korean consulate to establish a memorial 
for Queen Hyohwan Oak in Ayodhya. Thousands of Korean travel to the city to pay homage to their queen every year and it is very sad because it's highly likely that they are visiting the absolutely wrong city. But again, history being hijacked is not new at all. And that brings us to the more interesting option 3 that Princess Suri Ratna was from the Pandian Kingdom's territory of Ai or perhaps Ayuta, a name used for the region of Kanyakumari in the past. Let's see the possibilities here. The Pandian symbol was that of a twin fish resembling the same which is at the memorial of the Queen Hyohwang Oak. All the erstwhile South Indian kingdoms of the Chera, Chora, Pandya and Pallava had very strong trade ties with the Romans, Arabs and the Chinese. We all know how the Pallava prince Bodhidharma travelled to China to establish the Shaolin temple around the same time. The Pandyas had trade relations with the Chinese and so it's heavily likely that they forged an alliance with the new power there. Also, the 200-day sea travel indicates that the princess travelled from one of the ports in southern Tamil Nadu and definitely not from Ayodhya which is in the northern part of India. But here is the cherry on the topping. The more chronicled name of Princess Suri Ratna was Seem Pavaram, which is a Tamil name that stands for pure coral or red coral. It is highly possible that the name Suri Ratna was a derived name from Seem Pavaram where Ratna stands for the coral or the gemstone that married the King Suro. Now to some more interesting commonalities between Tamil and Korean communities. The first words that children speak, mom and dad, are Amma and Appa in both these languages. In fact, the Tamil letter of A looks very similar to its Korean alphabet equivalent. The Korean and Tamil languages have more than 500 words recorded in common and most of these are commonly used words and terms on an everyday basis. The lullaby sing in Tamil using rhyming terms like Araro Ariraro is similar to the most famous Korean lullabies sung with the words like Arirang Arirang Arario. The two communities share similar traditions like leaving the slippers outside the homes. Even more interesting is that the centuries old ancient game of Ammani or five stones is common between Tamil and Koreans. In Korea, it's called Gungi and is played popularly at homes exactly the same way between three women players just like it's played in the Tamil homes. When it comes to food, again there's a lot of commonality. Like Adursam, a jaggery sweet, has its equivalent yakwa in Korean, kanji or porridge has juk in Korean and sevai or idiapam which is rice noodles is called myron in Korean. Based on all the above and some more, the option 3, the fact that Hyo Hwang Oak was none other than Princess Seem Pavaram or Princess Suri Ratna from the Pandian Kingdom of South Tamil Nadu is the most plausible explanation of the story. While there may not be absolute archaeological evidence for this, it is to be said that it is definitely not a concocted story or a case of random coincidence. There are just too many similarities between the Korean and Tamil cultures. I am absolutely sure that this is a historic fact awaiting more evidence for confirmation. And I sincerely hope that this is a project that Indian historians and archaeologists will work along with the Korean historians and demystify keeping their own regional affiliations aside. On a lighter note, one of the things I've always wondered is why do the Korean TV series and sitcoms find such amazing popularity in Indian television, especially even the Tamil ones? And occasionally, how does the lip sync match between the actors who are supposedly speaking in Korean with the voiceover that is in Tamil? Now I know why. And that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story of Princess Seem Pavaram or Princess Suri Ratna or Queen Hyo Hwang Wok and looking at the interesting connections between the Korean and Tamil communities that was established 2000 years back. Stay safe, get vaccinated soon and I hope to see you soon with yet another interesting episode of Masala History. Happy summer. Bye-bye.